So you start up the brand Bible, which is pretty much a resource guide for people that want to be able to start up a brand. What made you want to take a step back from your actual brand to be able to help other people with their brands? So I had a brand before this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so happy. I really got slimed out. I was, what happened? What happened? Tell us. So, and I, I noticed, I see your stuff on social media a lot, and there's a lot of creative direction behind your photo shoots or just the pictures that you post and everything. Where is this inspiration coming from? Um, it's coming from up here, man. I'm just a creative individual. Mm-hmm. Of course, I don't do everything myself. I do have a team. Okay. And um, we just we just sit down and find ways to push the narrative and try to be different. We don't necessarily to try too hard but we got to stand out and just be different these days my name is big joe everybody call me joe i'm the creative director and assistant director at the london streetwear market what's your name and what is your brand my name is day my brand's called eoh forever it stands for eyes on him eyes on god my name is okito my brand is clarity studios what's going on y'all we live at the london streetwear market media day you already know where we at we're at the famous studio space in atlanta man come on let me show you what's going on so all the top name designers in Atlanta is in the building right now, man. All the people say Atlanta don't got fashion, but I'm gonna show you a little something. Like you know, what I'm saying, just check out what's going on. It's your boy Mino on the mic, and today I got here with me Christian Bruder, Carson Walker with Vigilant and Virtuous. And I really love this right now because we got the dopest and the hottest brands in the city of Atlanta. And I really like what you guys got going on right now with this fit. It looks real unique. I've never seen it before. So tell me a little bit about your brand. So everything we make is one-on-one. All vintage inspired, vintage fabrics, all vintage base. Nice. Every piece we make is a work of art. That's how we look at it. Not mm-hmm. clothing, works of art. And what's the name of this brand? Vigilant and Virtuous. VV. What does that mean to you guys? It's pretty much just pulls from us. Everything we grew up with. What we know is being raised. Yeah. He's from Oregon. I'm from Maryland. So we have a lot of different things, part of our lives that coexist in the brand. You can see it yeah. for sure. Oregon and Maryland. I, th- I think that's like two separate places away from each other. Like, how did you guys, tell us about how you guys, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell us about how you guys met. Met in college. You met in college? What college was that? Uh, SCAD in uh, Savannah, Georgia. Nice. Do you think um, like going, to, SCAD is an actual fashion school, right? Yes. Do you think they have a fashion department there? Yeah, and, but essentially it's an art and design school. For sure, that's exactly okay. what it is. So, how, how is that played into you guys' designs? What you guys make, and how do you think that has influenced your brand overall? Well, I think it just adds to your skill set, right? And that's going to come through in every garment. The higher the skill set, with a vision, I mean, limitless. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And just being exposed to creatives every single day of the week while you're in college that helps too you know bounce ideas off people everything's been done in this world yeah how can you make it original yourself is the big question and being around creatives it's the easiest way to do it okay if you guys are to give advice to any up-and-coming brand owner entrepreneur who wants to be able to make it in this game what would you tell them be yourself don't try to be like any other brand oh i like that what about you almost the same thing don't sell garments that's not what you're doing you're not selling clothes that's not what you're doing and anybody that does fashion. that is going to be around for one or two years, yeah. maybe three, and then they're gone. Ooh, I like that. Create fashion with a meaning, right? Not even that. Sell a message. Ooh. Sell the message. What's the message? What comes from your life that is a message that you're like, this is this is me every day. I wake up every day with that message. Sell that. What message are you selling right now? We're selling the Christianity cowboy military message. Yeah. And the message to be yourself. Cause Say it again? To be yourself. Because if you got a VV piece, you ain't like no one else. One on one, every single piece. Like each person. I love it. I love it. I love it. Go ahead and shout out your brand. Where can people find you? Where can they shout with you at? Vigilant Virtuous on Instagram. We got a website. VigilantVirtuous.com That's all you got We got you in Atlanta Shop us locally At Exclusive Game Right next to Icebox And Buckhead Are y'all in the Exclusive Game? Yes sir Oh these big time boys Right here man Appreciate y'all so much man It's your boy Mino on the mic man We live here At the Atlanta Street Real Market Media Day You already know What's going on man Let's get it What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Mino on the mic. Right now, we are live at the Atlanta Streetwear Market Media Day. Pretty much what this is, is they call out the dopest designers in the city of Atlanta to be able to showcase their brands and be able to show up at a live pop-up shop. So today, I got here with me. Fast Swag in the building. Fast Swag. What does that mean to you? Fast Swag. What does that mean to me? I'm the fattest and I got the most swag. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very simple. So, in a world like today, a lot of people don't embrace that. What makes you want to embrace that? I'm just very confident in myself pretty 
pretty much just straightforward, you know what I'm saying? Very confident, and I just felt like wasn't nobody out here stepping up for the plus size people. So yeah. I went ahead and stepped up, man, and now I'm the voice. So I noticed like a lot of brands, especially in today's time, there'll be certain people that only go up to like 2X or maybe not even that. They'll even go up to like extra large. Have you noticed that you niching down in this actual category has helped your brand? Yes, indeed. My brand goes up to 6X. Okay. And um, it really uh just helped a lot of people my size have have a brand that has some clothing for them. And I've seen that other brands are kind of following the suit, you know, getting yeah. bigger sizes. They might not go up to 6X, but they might do a little 3 or something so you know it's a good day for all of us 100% I agree with that so there's a lot of people that want to be able to start a brand but they maybe not know where to start or how to even get into it right so what advice would you give to somebody right now that's watching this and they want to be able to get into the fashion industry but they don't know where to start that's really a good question because everybody has different paths but I'm gonna tell that person whatever you feeling yeah. I'm gonna tell you to run with it even if it doesn't work you might learn from it you know what I'm saying so yeah. I can't really tell you what to do but whatever you feeling you need to do go ahead and do it if it's a w if it's a w if it's a l we're gonna learn from it. you need to go on to the next 100 and one more question for you so what's the one thing that has changed it for your brand the one piece of advice that you got that has changed everything for your brand and help you elevate probably increase your sales or actionable step that these people can be able to take listen man if you got some money or whatever you got going on invest in some photo shoots find your photographer lock in I'm saying the mock-ups and all that stuff, it can only get you so far. You guys need to get your cameraman and just lock in and create that content. Yeah. To the people out there, because there's people who think you really can't make a living off of fashion, mm -hmm. what, what would you say to somebody like that? You can definitely make a living off fashion. If you take your time, I know, you know, we get caught up in the social media. There's guys out there doing 100K a day. Yeah. I'm not one of them. I would love to be one of them. You just got to take your time, move at a pace. It's about longevity. Yeah, yeah. Because to me, I feel like people wear clothes every single day, every which day. means that you forever have a customer if you can be able to cater to those niches. So I, I think... Gonna, I ain't going to lie to you. Um, I had to learn that as well. I'm still figuring things out myself, but clothes are forever. There's always somebody out there that's going to like your clothes. If you don't, you know, you might wake up and think your clothes ain't as good as the next man. Uh -huh. It don't matter. Yeah. If you're trying to elevate, you'll get there, but there's always a market or somebody for you. Yeah, you know? yeah. All right, so I I actually got to touch on this because I actually like this, right? So right now, I feel like I stand on this hill and I'm ready to die on, which is pre-order method is dead. And I feel like because of that, the economy is changing now to where people want their stuff instantly. But I'm interested to hear your side on that. Do you feel like the pre-order method is still working or do you feel like that's a, a, a dead wave that has died? I ain't going to cap it down. I'm a pre-order guy. Atlanta Street where it will be my first time having it on hand. And I'm Honestly, I think the pre-order method is dying down a little bit. You yeah. dig what I'm saying? But depending on what type of brand you are and who you are and who your customers is, they might wait. Mm -hmm. But if you somebody like me who's been building, you might get a new customer every day. Yeah. I think they want their stuff immediately. I just explain the environment for the people out there that's watching, like, um, the experience of Atlanta Streetwear Market. Listen, man, Atlanta Streetwear, I haven't seen this anywhere else in America. No way. It's great vibes. Yeah. When you walk in, kid in the candy store, man, there's clothes everywhere, people everywhere, music. You just got to walk in and find that swag, man. It's something that you have to be at. Yes, definitely, man. Make sure that you pull up Atlanta Streetwear Market coming up in April for the spring show. Yeah. Go ahead and shout out your brand, where you from, and whatever else you want to tell the people. Listen, man. It's fast swag, the one and only, the biggest to ever do it. I'm from Daytona Beach, Florida. I need you to pull up to Atlanta Street. Well, pull up on me. I might have something for you. You dig what I'm saying? All right, man. Make sure you check out my butt, man. Fat Man Swag. Yeah, let's get it. Tell them your name and what do you do? My name is Big Joe. Everybody call me Joe. I'm the creative director and assistant director at Atlanta Streetwear Market. I love it. So Atlanta Streetwear Market is a is an event that has actually helped my brand out dramatically, right? But every single year. But what is the actual importance of the of a role like a creative director? Building community and understand essentially the goal. So our end goal is to build community, help brands, um, be able to monetize, grow their business, and things like that. You need it because I'm able to mesh everything together because intention is love and mm -hmm. pure intentions about everything we do. So, Atlanta Streetwear Market, how long has this been going on for? 2017. Since 2017? Yes, and you guys have been consistently at it since then? I've been on, I got um, initiated on the team 2018. Okay. So as soon as I got out of high school, I was a young nigga trying to get it. Ooh, 
shoes. So how old are you now? 25. I just oh, turned 25 man. in January. Oh my God. Is that big shoes to fill for somebody? Because this is such a big event. If you don't know, it's actually one of the biggest fashion events in the city of Atlanta. Being the creative director, is that a big shoe to fill? Man, it's crazy pressure. Cause like to everything y'all see in terms of decorations yeah. and, and interaction shit. The overall vibe, I'm in charge of making sure it's curated and executed to the mm -hmm. T. So, I mean, but I love what I, I do yeah. for you guys, so it's all good. So, being a creative director, right, because I, I feel like that's one of my weaknesses, right? It's just a creative direction. I can have a vision in my head, but to be able to bring it to life. Where does your inspiration come from as far as these designs or just to, to be able to put an entire event together like this? Where does your inspiration come from? It's really lifestyle based. I'm a real creative. Um, I can see it right yeah, now. I'm now. a real creative. So my, my favorite creative is ASAP Rocky. Okay. So that's initially like my day starting on that type of vibe, that type of timing. And there's a lot of love poured into it. But I'm definitely on that ASAP Rocky timing. So like I said, it's real lifestyle with me. Where are you originally from? Originally from Connecticut. I'm from Hartford. But I was raised in Riverdale. I'm real 85, Valley Hill. Got you. So Atlanta, well, Connecticut is close enough to New York, right? So New York has is a fashion state in general. Like that's almost where a lot of originated designs come mm -hmm. from. What would you like to see more in the South as you guys are curating these events? I'm imagining that you guys are looking to change the fashion culture in the city of Atlanta. What would you like to see more of in the South in the, as in a fashion industry culture aspect? Um, I think we need to diversify our crowds, our people, because I feel like Atlanta, it's a melting pot. Everybody knows it's known for melting pot, but I feel like we are essentially segregated, like in terms of, you know, the community, the fashion sense, because when you're in New York, it's a real melting pot. Like mm -hmm. everybody's hanging out, they mesh. So I just feel like we need to focus on our, the bridging the gap aspect. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know, but we got to get Atlanta how New York is. That's what I'm saying. New York is really a true melting pot. Everybody engages with everybody, you know, they share, you know, they don't be gatekeepers. We yeah. gotta bridge the gap. What is one way that we could be able to do that now? I can say, come to Atlanta Street where I keep fucking with the swag, you know, and like I said, we pushing the community. Yeah. So you keep doing lovely shit like that, everything gonna happen. Tapping with Atlanta Street where market, big four. Uh -huh. We up next. hundred percent. And the five year plan, five year percent Atlanta Street where market in general. What would you like to see, or what are some things that you guys are working on right now? Cause I've seen there's a lot of big partnerships or collaborations that's been going on lately. So I know you guys are working on something. Five year plan for Atlanta Street market. Growing our platform, um, growing our fashion show. Um, dynamic aspect of it and our community engagement and partnership. So our first partnership community engagement, we're going rocking out with the Skyhawks at the end of the month. So I, I curated that so we can have the opportunity to come watch a basketball you game. So with the Skyhawks? Yeah, the NBA, uh, the, uh, the Skyhawks, ATL Skyhawks, their D-League team. Oh my so God. Are owned by two chains, two chains on the team. So I set that up and we're going to go get drippy, mm -hmm. you know, watch a game, have some fun. Oh my God. See, big things coming for Atlanta Street Run Market. One more question for you right here, right? There's a lot of people out there who want to be able to start a brand or looking to start a brand but they don't know where to start right what advice would you give to somebody like that that's actually looking to be able to get into the fashion industry start just brainstorm look at what you want to do plan everything out to teeth so first thing you do get you a notebook and a pen get your notebook and a pen and just sketch out your vision and then just take it step by step you know? step by yeah. step your research but take it step by step you ain't got to rush nothing take it day by day man get one percent better get every single day get you a notebook get you a notebook yeah man listen to what he say man go ahead and shout out your brand shout out uh, your instagram and wherever you Okay, shout out to Money Boys Apparel, shout out to the foe. You can follow me on Instagram at fake goyard bag yep. and then E N underscore visionary and N Visionary Pro. I appreciate everything you do, man. Y'all has helped my brand grow dramatically, bro. So most definitely, man. It's your boy Mina on the mic, man. Make sure you tap in, man. Let's go. The boy Chi, man. Big Poppy Chi on Instagram. Big Poppy Chi on Instagram. And also, um, you anybody that I actually follow on Instagram, and I see you promote a lot of things about the brand, the brand Bible. Is that you as well? Yeah, I actually have one of the tees on right now. You feel me? Ooh, show it to him right quick. Show it to him. So it's the Boxy Tee, man. You get on the brand Bible right now, man. No, explain, explain this tee for me right quick. So I really perfected this size chart with like, because you know the Boxy bit was like, you know, in style. So I was like, let me make my own stuff. So I basically, I'm like, I feel like I made a perfect boxy tee, the, the tightest neckline, everything. You put that motherfucker on, the first time it's going to stretch. Yeah. So you feel me? I feel like I did it. So just for the people who are not aware, so the brand Bible is essentially just a guideline for somebody that's looking to be able to start up a brand. Is that correct? So yeah, basically the brand Bible is more of like, a, I would say more of like a collective space where I put a lot of information for people to start brands, people to still you know, go on with brands. So it's like, it's always updated. There's uh, mock-ups on there. There's resources. There's a, there's a 
it's just a lot of other stuff, not just for brands, but yeah. just for creative in general. And outside of the brand Bible, um, whoa, is this your brand as well? My brand is called Global Thread. Okay. Um, yeah, really, this is my popular piece as well. It's the black one, but I started uh, doing other colors because the black one got so popular. And, and come in a little bit on this design, because this is actually something that I haven't really seen too much before. So you also have the rhinestones and then on this side as well. What inspires you behind these designs? Because I'm seeing that you're, you're taking a unique route that everybody else isn't doing. What's the, what's your inspiration? Well, I'm Nigerian. I'm Igbo, so like we like a lot of flashy clothes. Mm. So I put a lot of rhinestones on my stuff and then like a simple logo. Because yeah. it's not really about, the, I don't want y'all to really look at the logo. I want y'all to look at the piece in general. Yeah. So if you see this, it's going to catch an eye. Yeah, yeah. So I'm West African as well, bro. I'm from Sierra Leone, bro. So I salute that. But uh, one thing that a lot of people don't know is like just growing up African, you go through a whole different route than most other people go. And it's a, it's a certain culture that's instilled in us, right? And even down to like fashion, like when you have to come down to uh, just the pattern makings and everything, how do you think that you growing up African has influenced either your life, your career, or your designs in general? Well, like you said, African, we grow up different. Yeah. So it's like my parents put instilled in me, like I'm a hustler, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, and when it comes to my African culture, I said we, we're like, my, my tribe is like more extravagant. Like we have like our clothes, you, you're going to spot our clothes from a mile away. And that's how I try to do with my clothes. Like you want, I want you to be able to spot it from like a mile away. Be like, yo, he got that shit on. A hundred percent. So one, one of the last few questions here. So you start up the brand Bible, which is pretty much a resource guide for people that want to be able to start up a brand. What made you want to take a step back from your actual brand to be able to help other people with their brands? So I had a brand before this. So happy. I really got slimed out. I was, what happened? What happened? So, so late, they slimed me out. I thought he was my man. She slimed me out. A bad business partner? Yeah. yeah. So um, while I had that, though, I was making a brand by because this was back in like 2021 and TikTok was still, you know, you know, TikTok was just getting up. So we was using TikTok and we was blowing up off of TikTok. Yeah. So a lot of people were asking, like, how do you make samples? They were just asking a lot of questions that I already had the answers to, but I thought everybody had the answers to. Yeah. I didn't know they didn't have it. So I just made the brand Bible because on top of that, I was making mock-ups. They're like, oh, man, that shirt is hard. Is this a real shirt? And I was like, nah, it's a mock-up. I just, you know, manipulated it on Photoshop. So everybody kept asking for it. I was emailing it out. And I was like, this one day, I was like, man, I'm not going to email this guy. This is like the 50th dude. I'm going to just put it on a website. So yeah. I made a website and then put it all on there. And it just started going crazy for yeah. me. See, a lot of times what I tell people is like, you just got to take the risk. Sometimes you just got to go out and do it because the thing that you think is going to work, sometimes it, like you might have a, a whole collection, right? And you bank all your money on this one particular item in this collection, but it's another piece that might go crazy. So, a couple things. I want to rewind just a little bit. You said you had a bad business partner or deal, right? How can the next person... Because uh, we can talk about it unless you want to talk about it. Let's but talk about it. how? Okay, let's first ask what happened. And this is for information purposes for the people that's out there, right? It's not really anything like I would say information because I don't think anybody else would be put in this position. Mm -hmm. The the you guy. Know. The, well, you right, you right. Well, the guy doing uh, my brand with that was my man's at the time. Mm -hmm. Long story short, he met some other niggas, and they was like, "You don't need that nigga." Uh, so they cut you out the pot. Yeah, they cut me out the pot. And got the brand though. So the brand is dead now. Well, do you think that? Okay, bet. So do you think that situation has elevated you into a higher position? Do you think that you learned something from that? What did you learn from that entire ordeal? Oh hell yeah! I I, I pray to God every day that that position should happen to me mm -hmm. I, at the time i was mad as hell but i mean every day i was like thank you god i'm a big believer in god i said yeah. thank you god that happened to me because if I, that didn't happen to me i wouldn't have this energy that i have right now to be doing all this other stuff i'm doing yeah i'm way better off now so it's like yeah and what i learned from it is like bro like, at the end of the day you just need yourself and and like legit a good support group 100%. at the time i had like about like 15 20 people with me helping me with the other brand mm -hmm. this time it's just me my brother and my other man so it's mm. just three people and we make it way more money printing way more money than before man yeah. you feel me and you see a lot of people think that losses are actual losses yeah. but would you say that losses are lessons yeah losses are lessons at the time i thought I was done, yeah. but you feel me? Well, you that's, know, that's how we all working. is. You where where your faith is at. I know you oh, told God. me that you believe in God, too. Yeah. So it's like, it depends on that. So one more thing. So I think you would be the perfect person to answer this question. Yeah. So right now, the whole reason why we're even doing this is to be able to help up and coming people that are in fashion um, be able to get into it. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people out there who don't know where to start. They don't know where to get these resources from. Sure. They don't know how to be able to start a clothing oh, yeah, brand sure. and then even believe that they could be able to make a living off of clothing brand. 
So what advice would you give to somebody like that that's actually looking to learn? Hey, come to the Brand Bible that US, man. I have everything from A to Z, how to start, how to maintain, yeah. and how, you know, just day-to-day -day activities on the brand. I have everything on the Brand Bible, man. Come yeah. to the Brand Bible that US, man. So I actually heard about the Brand Bible before I actually met you. We met at an um, actual pop-up shop, another event, right? Yeah. Would you say that your brand is outgrowing you as a person? Hell yeah, and I wanted to. I don't want nobody to know I ran the Brand Bible. I, it was like, I was running that for about like, what, two years by myself. Nobody knew I was running it. I want to be faceless. You feel me? So do you think it's better for somebody to build an actual brand first or build their personal brand and be able to come up? What, what do you think is best? In today's time, I say you build your, your like personal brand and then you do the brand. Because back then when I did it, it kind of was one. It was like hand in hand. It came back then when? I want to say like 2021, when, when okay. we was using TikTok and stuff, like when TikTok was like the organic was popping for mm -hmm. real, there was not many brands on TikTok. Yeah. It was hand in hand, so my personal and my brand was growing. Okay. Would you agree that times are changing now, just on like how you can even market? Oh, yeah, for sure. TikTok ain't even it no more, bro. It's not? Yeah, for my brand, it wasn't even TikTok that brought this brand up. It was Instagram. I was sending it out to influencers mm. and my boy Stax. I sent it out to my boy Stax in Louisiana. I followed okay. you, my boy Stax. He wore that. As soon as he wore that, everybody got onto it. Mm. Like, I, I, mind you, I dropped it like months before he wore it. Yeah. Nobody cared. Mm -hmm. As soon as he wore it, they get scared. So do you think, I mean, is that a good way to be able to get some sales right now? Like, yeah, oh, like influencers? influencers? Yeah, influencers, cash cows. Give them, give an influencer. You, networking, man. I always tell people about networking. This this event in general, bro. Yeah. I, I'm trying to find somebody to give some free stuff to today. Yeah. How do you vet out, how do you vet out a good influencer versus like a, a, a influencer to pay? Like, I look at the you? engagement. I go to their page to look at their engagement. My boy Stacks guy. But you, you can fake engagement, though, right? I mean, you can fake engagement as far as like how, say like you post one pic, no, no, you say like you post three times a week mm -hmm. and you having a good engagement. Like say like you got what, 30,000 followers and you getting what? I'll say about like 4,000 uh, likes. That's good. That's like 10% of yeah. your followers. That's a good engagement. Mm. If you post it once every month and you getting like 9,000 followers, I'm thinking you paying it for the likes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? All right, that, that's good advice. And what about, uh, I know because you say Instagram, and we're just trying to help everybody. Like, yeah. do, do you rely, what's more important? Let's say this, right? Influencers or ads? Ads, what the hell? Ads, ads, you, gonna, you can get somebody in Turkey with ads. Mm. With influencers, you only get who's following them. So most of the time, especially with American influencers, it's really just American following or people from UK. Mm -hmm. that I can sell to somebody in Croatia mm -hmm. because of the ads. Mm -hmm. You feel me? An influencer is not going to hit the guy in Croatia. Yeah. My Facebook ads is going to hit a guy in Croatia, though. Hey, this man is driving so much shit. I can't even get y'all too much. I can really sit here. We can have a whole hour yeah, interview. Nah, no I ain't going to lie. We might have to set that up, though, bro. Yeah, boy, but I appreciate you so much, man. It's your boy, Mina on the mic. Right now, we are live at the Atlanta Streetwear Market Fashion Show. Go ahead and shout your Instagram one more time for the people. Hey, man, it's at Big Poppy Chi, the brand Bible.us, and Global Threat USA. So you're trying to be able to get sales, right? But you only can choose one method. Are you going with the influencer route or are you going with the paid ads route? Which one would you say? I don't run ads and I just recently started giving myself the influence. You don't run ads? No. I've never run an ad and I just, like I said, recently. You know, TikTok, for real. <laughs> uh, TikTok helps you guys out a lot? Okay. Damn. TikTok helps some, yeah, for sure. But What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Mino on the mic. What I do is I help people start and grow their clothing brand. If you're looking to learn, make sure that you DM me the word brand. I'll show you everything from how to find a manufacturer. I'll show you how to get your first sale. You know, I got you. Okay, I got you. And that's a wrap, guys. We just interviewed some of the dopest, hottest fashion brands in the city of Atlanta. If you want more content like this, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe below. Like, comment, and subscribe below. We're going to keep this thing going. It's your boy Mino on the mic, and you're tuned in on the Mino on the mic show. Let's get it.